What do you say, Joe? What's going on? How much? This is a uh, advertisement for Tyler I'm doing. We yeah, we see a lot of old Joe. He comes to fix our machine a lot. <laughs> They're going to uh, build a uh, another little store right here. A gas no, a gas company. Just bottled gas. And he's uh But uh, no, we're, he's dribbling on this nitrogen right now, about 20 gallons per acre. And then if it doesn't rain, we're planning on coming back over and spot spraying it with Accent and Beacon or Beacon. Chewing. chewing. I see people sitting down. Oh. Sitting down and chewing. That's right. Oink Incorporated. Now I like that. <laughs> Got anything left, Jim Bob? Just yeah, anything left over here yet? Huh? Yeah, a little bit left. Take a look at it. What are we cooking? I guess we're kicking it there. We're still trying to get boiled again. Yeah. yeah. Crawfish? Yeah. Woo! Get ready. Woo! 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 How come you're sweating there, Mike? Huh? How come you're sweating? <laughs> around, this, uh, around these cookers. Right. You guys made the best food I've ate in a long time last year. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. What we got over here? Some butt? Oh, this is turkey. Oh, Cajun I love it. Turkey. Ooh, I love this turkey. I remember it from last year. Grab your trunk. Oh, my golly. I remember it from last year. Mm -mm. Oh, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <coughs> Get some of that turkey, David. He's bringing some more barbecue. Anything left over there? Huh? <laughs> 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 Leave any food up there? Yeah. What you got? Camera. Right. Say hello. Got anything left? Hello. You got anything left? Is there, is there any good? There's plenty. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a crap. There's a crawfish. I'm gonna go out the woods, I guess. Now, last year this thing was about that tall. It probably was when it first started. Yeah. Joe and I are doing our best to keep it from getting over there. Is that what you're doing? Uh huh.
and to find me a house, and I want to talk to Terry Mann and see what I, if he can supply me what I want. <laughs> and, uh, and, and pouring a two and a half gallon bucket of water over the front of a John boat with a trolling motor behind it, mixing it up. That don't matter as much as just at work. Well, it's a whole lot better than what the superintendent wanted to do, tie a string around the cap, <laughs> puncture holes in the bottle, and throw it overboard, and just drag it around the pond. This is sonar? Yeah, sonar. And then you can do that aqua shed. But they do all kinds of things with sonar. It's pretty adaptive. Yeah, that's what I was just doing. Well, That's the repel. Repel. Oh, yeah, Microns or micrometers in size. There are a number of different nozzles. We have ground nozzles. We're looking at a ground brush control nozzle here. We have what on, on this particular gun, we have a, a slightly higher reach so that if you're spraying with taller brush, a slightly larger droplet, you can get a little more distance. What is the maximum distance? Uh, about 20, 25 feet with uh, maximum with pressure out of this sprayer. Yeah. yeah, we can, with this nozzle, we should be able to just barely get that one. And uh, our, our spray volumes, the, obviously we're working with a spray fluid here that costs more than water, but uh, where we gain the advantage and enable us to use this is by, uh, by, working, by reducing our vo spray volumes to three to five gallons per acre so that a backpack like this, which is a two and a half gallon uh, backpack, will do almost an acre, and in some cases, some situations, depending on brush density, more than an acre. We have a set of plots down, my, uh, down the way end here, a thin bird plots that we put out with Arsenal. Uh, I believe two years, it was 93, uh, fall, end of the season was 93. Do it. This is the uh, radiar pattern. Uh, you'll notice here that this is a typical pattern. I do not, we're spraying right now at a 30 PSI. Bump the pressure up, I'll move back. What areas is this here? What's that? You assume it's going to be picking these areas up in between these yeah. patterns? Yeah, you see what we have here, the, the rate of oscillation of the radiar is what makes it meet or skip. If it oscillates too oh, slow, okay. there's a gap. We re increase the oscillation rate. The interesting thing about this thing, you can almost not see that you're spraying. Uh, the pattern that we work with when we're going down the right of way, and of course we'll be mounting this device about 8 to 10 feet high behind a skidder or a four-wheel drive tractor, but we will be working with larger nozzles in the center and smaller nozzles at the edge so that we get a uniform rate across the swath. If we happen to want a higher rate at the edge, we can increase the nozzle size there. We're just working here with a little three gallon per minute electric pump but typically you would have a centrifugal pump operating uh, with this particular device. Uh, for roadside spraying, we make this device so that it can, uh, spraying in the, ho in the vertical pattern, it can uh, uh, tip up or down and uh, reduce the swath width, and you can do this without recalibration. Uh, bringing it up to a maximum pressure here, right now we're about 35, 30 psi, this way. Well, I'll tell you what, we're we'll trying to get this thing cooked, you know, uh, so anybody want to take a look at the hydro wind kind of person here, you can take a look at it. We also have two little boom busters and all. Now those boom busters are behind the back of mm -hmm. that. What, how is it powered? What's the power by? Electric? Electric. Runs right off the battery. Uh -huh. Off the motor. This one here, but it's four, and it, it looks pretty good. We've got a lot of good ground cover. Video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going on for trying to evaluate it, especially if you're flying over the lines, you, the stuff looks green. You think, well, hell, that stuff's That's really fine. coming back. When you get down yeah, to the ground, it's yeah. just vines yeah, crawling up. And so you've really got to look at it from the air and from the ground also. But if you miss something at 20, 25 foot height, 
regardless of what you put out. If you've got a resistant species there, then you don't have a hell of a lot of time before it gets in the line if you don't have much clearance. So it's another another big reason to get the stuff down, spray it while you can. Six o'clock in the morning does not want to think of going through this stuff. We're blackberry this time. So here's where you make sort of a compromise. If you get a wide ROW, then you have the possibility of doing this right down the middle for access. You say, well, that's bad for wildlife. No. If you get a jungle, a low jungle, no trees, <laughs> you, you solve that problem. You created this jungle. Many critters will, can't go through that. In fact, the white-tailed deer does not want to go through that. And that's a big mammal. This is a road and access. You're actually creating a corridor. For who? Bobcats, raccoons, coyotes, everything. So I, I say fine. If you want a little access road, changing your policy, or whatever you're going to do, that's fine with me. Now getting back to the vegetation, this problem basically has been whipped. What was the problem? The hardwood brush is gone. We have replaced that with, we would like to have more forest. This, this spot is a little aberrant because it is wrapped up in honeysuckle. Next, as you can see, we'll have some honeysuckle, not 80% of cover. Honeysuckle is either bad or good, depends on what you are. If you're out there, let's say, backpack spraying, you don't like honeysuckle because you can't move. White-tailed deer, that's one of their choice foods. It produces berries by the tons, which would be good for a lot of songbirds and everything else. This is good. That's one problem. From a wildlife point of view, it's getting too what? Too dense. Too dense, yeah. Too thick. You say, was that a problem for these guys? No. <laughs> Nothing's getting up this way. It's only for us who have to walk through it. This is a problem. How about erosion? <laughs> Beautiful, clean water will come through here. The rain is never even going to get near the soil. We've solved that problem. The hardwoods are gone. Look at this dead one. They're beautiful. I want more forbs. In uh, the other plots, you'll see we have more forbs. The honeysuckle just happened to be here. Arsenal Accord knocks honeysuckle down. It does not kill a lot of it. So when you open it up to full sunlight, what happens? It recovers and just goes, Lord, this is magnificent. All right, white-tailed deer food, you got 1,000 pounds per acre. In the winter, the deer were just pour into this as a food plot because that honeysuckle and blackberry is not in the woods, obviously. This is a good operation. Any questions? Small mammals, they'll be a mediocre population. They want more grass and more forest to do seeds rather than honeysuckle vegetation covering everything. One thing you need to understand about the aerial application now, uh, Gary Pace wanted to side trim, so what, that's what we did. We went along the edge, and you know when you side trim with Arsenal, you're going to kill some trees. So he's topped out some of those along the side, but he wanted it burnt back, and that's what we did. With that air, with the helicopter, so that's what you're looking at. Call the slides that Jim Bob showed. What was here before? Walk back along some of the side cuts and make sure what the plot really looks like. This is Arsenal Accord, one and a half pints and three quarts. And again, it looks like you're looking at tall brush, but this this you're really looking into a bank here. And the best way to see it is on the sides to look down. This is all about the same. I walked out in there and there's hardly anything except the sumac that's over my head. Uh, this is a pretty good plot. Again, this, this mixture seems to be doing real well on a wide variety of, of brush species. You see it's getting the privet. It should get the privet real good at that rate. If we don't get it, then I don't feel like we got the coverage because Arsenal a pint and a half will definitely kill privet. Notice as you're walking down, there's a number break of pint and a half. Right down the bottom, you about where the corner or for by itself. Yeah. Notice the difference from a pine apple to a corner. What's much more control you'll get by going to that corner. Well, we got we got some sweet gums coming through it. I don't know why. I may have, I got some skips, but there shouldn't be any sweet gums in it. And I saw some down there, so. Is that a function of just missing? Them so you know there? we didn't bait the plots up, huh? Is that a function of just maybe missing? Them? I don't know. I, I I can only assume it didn't get on there because I I have never had any trouble killing sweet gum, and it's usually an indicator mm -hmm. species with arsenal. When I go in and try to, on these costs, I, I see that, uh, I don't know where I got some of these costs either. I'm going to have to go back and refigure these costs because uh, number uh, number two says a pint and a half of arsenal and three quarts of a cord is $45. That's not right. A pint and a half of arsenal is uh, 23 plus 12 is 35 bucks and three quarts of a cord is about 30 bucks, 30, 32 bucks. It says one cord. No, I'm just talking about that last plot. I was trying to figure the cost. So it's garlic, I'm an arsenal and a quart of garlon. 
We've seen some antagonism with garlon. Uh, we like to see garlon for some of the waxy leaf species, but uh, seems like if, if it, things brown out too fast for any reason, then we, we basically lose our arsenal or it, it uh, reduces effectiveness. And I think that's one of the reasons Arsenal, arsenal crenite is not a bad mix. It's an expensive mix. That's one of the big disadvantages of arsenal crenite. It'll be the most expensive of these mixes, along with the garlon tordon. You always have to use a gallon and a half? A gallon and a half is about the minimum you want to use with crenite. Some of them go to two gallons. Uh, I wouldn't come below a gallon and a half. You heard yesterday from Dr. Shaner that you need good wetting. It works on the buds. It doesn't translocate well. It's good for side trimming. The biggest problem is its selectivity. When you put the number of species this, this chemical controls on a list, it's a pretty damn short list. But the fact is, it's good for side trimming by itself. It's a... What? They're all on the, on the thing, the 616. These are all 616. Uh, this one is, uh, I know it looks like a check plot, but this is Garlon Tordon. And don't think too badly of it because we've got a lot of privet hedge in here. All that privet, it's not going to touch that. So you really have to kind of, uh, if you have time, walk back through or go along the side, uh, visualize the plot without the, without. Just how many hackberry you got if you put an arsenal escort out. It's a good mix if you want to get black, uh, black locusts. Escort's excellent on black locusts. Uh, yeah, we saw it getting some cedar down here, eastern red cedar. So it makes a good mix for that. So it, when you go into write prescriptions, you really have to look at what is 80 to 90 percent of your brush species before you make a prescription. Now, if you uh, when you're looking down this right away and you see this this arsenal escort again, if you visualize it without the red bud, without the the hackberry and the pines, it doesn't touch pine either. Then you uh, got a pretty good looking job. It's harder on the vines than the arsenal accord. You'll see better vine control with escort. Spray that down the right away, and you're going to go out in one spot, and it's going to look absolutely great. You're going to go 100 feet, and it's going to look ridiculous. And the only thing we know for sure is that you can plan on it being inconsistent when you use it by itself. I mean, everybody that's used it will tell you this. And so that's another reason that we're adding the arsenal to try to stabilize the mix and get an overall better control than this. But we don't want to discount the fact of what it's bringing to the table, and that's why we want to have Monsanto's recommendation, six to ten quarts. What do you feel? A gallon. A gallon. Oh, if you're, yeah, a gallon or less, with, yeah. With the, I've gone down to three quarts in, in some areas, of, depending on the species again. If you don't have a lot of uh, uh, pine trees, uh, three quarts is more than enough. With some, don't forget the surfactant. Now, neither one of these products have surfactant. <coughs> And I'm glad that we all got to hear Val Ivey's talk on surfactant yesterday because it had a lot of good information walking as we go. And we're getting closer to the cold drinks. That's what counts. Uh, we got two quarts, I mean a quart of arsenal, two pints by itself. And what you shouldn't see in here is sweet gum. If we sprayed it, you shouldn't see any sweet gum. What you should see is pines. If anybody's getting too hot now, we can we can let you head on down to a shade tree. I don't want anybody passing out on me. I can't afford the lawsuit. And please don't get any fire ants. I don't cord. Again, we tried a lot of different rates trying to see if there was a, a real difference by adjusting them. This is a pine arsenal in four quarts. It's the same mix as we first looked at down over the that uh, way back over the top of the hill. Uh, I see a maple made it through and uh, there is some hackberry and their privet shouldn't be there, but everything else is not bad. The height of the brush you can see is is getting down to where two years old situation. Yeah. The problem has been solved. The hardwoods basically are gone. We've co converted this to an awful lot of blackberry. That's fine. There are many forbs growing in here. Your broadleaf weeds, but out here they're not called weeds. Queen Anne's lace and daisy, and you're gonna have all kind of goldenrod. Hokeweed, hoax salad, whatever you want to call it. Just look at this ground layer. That's very acceptable now versus that dense brush and tree layer. This is an old field situation. I'm getting down to now. The density at this ground level still has become thick. This is only two years growth now. Right away, management, you've got the problem with. There's a grapevine, grapevine growing. growing. That's fine with me. 
that's not going to present a major problem for access. Anybody can get through great. You got some honeysuckle that will increase. The problem here basically has been solved. Now you have another situation. You have an old field type situation with blackberry and a whole bunch of flowering plants. Store got some stuff that said fire ant killer, not fire ant control. It was orthene. I, I think the chemical was uh, ACE. Thank you. Or thing. But it's got a caution label, but I tell you what, you can't stand the smell of it. You get in the car with that stuff and it'll knock you down, yeah, man. Because we didn't need it. doing two ounces of escort. Uh, basically the same thing we used on the other side. And it, it's it's pretty good control. We got some rubus coming in that it, it did a better job on the blackberry on the other side. But uh, we got some pines back in here you can't see, but they're, they'll are they still be there. We got a few elm, a few hackberry. And some privet we should have got. Obviously, but the, you're going to have pines forever. I mean, linemen, of course, can recognize that problem. You got 70, 80 feet tall pine trees producing the seed crop just about every year. And how far will those seeds float with the wings on them? Out to here. At least. This plot uh, is, is a quart of arsenal and two quarts of a cord. Now we left our arsenal and backed down our cord. You got about $65, $66 worth of chemical here. Uh, I think he does have GPS. The pines, so you see, when you lower the cord, for sure you're going to start releasing some pines. But other than that, uh, we did a good job in here with the brush. We're looking there. Yeah, two, two, uh, two years ago. You don't have a lot of forbs flying, blackberries, pokeweed. This is highly acceptable. This is an old field situation. Producing what? What is the R squared? Rats and rabbits. Lots of them. Meaning the bobcats will be in here and the coyotes and all the other good predators. Another good thing you guys do is put up those towers, which are what? Hawks and owls. Perches. Perches, right. <laughs> you gotta have Good those towers so you can look down at the ground. Let's make sure everybody's got one. Uh, I don't know how many. I, I filled that cooler up. I don't know how many there is. Later at Bush Hog, <laughs> while we were spraying this stuff on the left, we Bush Hogged these next three plots. Got the brush down. We came back in, uh, I believe it says uh, September, what, on the, on the sign of. August 18th. Oh, August 18th, okay. Went out here. Uh, at 1%, it's less than $30. But, but you also got a lot of blackberries, and again, it depends on whether you can put up with these or not. If you don't, and you got some species in there you want to make sure you control and you're going to mix the accord with it, then we'll see that on the next plot. But uh, again, this is straight arsenal, and uh, we did, they did a good job. Look how far ahead your right away is now versus spraying the cold. And that's the other thing. If I, I missed the, I knew I was going to miss the red bud, but look at the height of it here. Uh, it's still not, I mean, I got a couple of years before I have to worry about that rascal. Do all of you know why red bud is not killed by arsenal? Lagoon. So is white bud. Yes. <laughs> so is alder. So is like red bud. Not alder, no. Well, isn't alder? It's not legume. I thought, I thought it was not alder, no. no. Anyway, I'm happy with this situation. Again, it's about this high. I've got my flowering forbs. I got tons and tons of blackberry. The songbirds will be in here eating the, everything eats blackberries. Ah, 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 that's wildlife food. He's getting one. <laughs> I get pretty wild. Oh. <laughs> All you have to do is see what it was like to start with is look behind you. I mean, what it would look like right now. I mean, we got some woolly that damn stuff in it. This is an early successional stage. This is what I would like to have. This, this is a legume. Yeah, that is a legume. Oh, yeah. There's a few pines in here, obviously. Yes, you're going to come back hey, some year and spot a tree. What are we doing? I'm taking a commercial? I'm making a commercial. everything they could spray uh, just to see what that would do rather than spot spray the brush and you'll see a different ground 
ground complex in here by doing that. And uh, we got some got some plenty of wildflowers. There's a, you don't see many blackberries out here. There are some, but you can walk through this pretty easy. And I think this is really what the utilities are are shooting for right here. This isn't rocket science. I mean, this is fairly easy to understand. I think that if you can cut it down and spray it while you can get over the top of it, then you can get it under control and you can keep it that way. There's where you start talking about a program instead of putting out fires and cutting stuff that's threatening the line all the time and having to jump from spot to spot to get it down. Yeah. Jim, Ma, would you say that, that the way this looks is more of a factor of, of being cut low and sprayed afterwards than it is the technique of spraying it? I think it's both. I, oh, you mean as far as broadcasting it? Yeah, would you say that you get better control after you bush hog it and wait a few months and spray it than you do trying to spray something that's just like this? I don't know that you get any better control, but what you end up with is a lot of dead soldiers out there that, that have vines crawling up them, and you have to really, to evaluate, have to wade through it to see what you got. If you really, if you time, right, Jim Bob? Yeah. This right here, and then back by the tower, you can see the brush was mowed at the same time, and then they left, what was it, three months, four months of growth? Yeah. And it got, you can see as high, as tall as the stuff is over there right now, and that's been treated, that was treated last year. So you had just, you know, 15 to 20 foot of growth back there. And then uh, the Aspen crew came in while we had the tour last year and they went in and sprayed T and G. And you can still see that this was being mowed the same time. This was treated, what, two months afterwards? Yeah, three months. Yeah. Three months. That's, this is September here. Okay, this was treated September. Uh, that was treated, what, a year later? Yeah, and, uh, that was treated a year later, 94, yeah. yeah. 94, and you can look at the height difference from here to over there. I mean, it's just, there, there's no comparison. Yeah. <laughs> the last plot we got is an arsenal granular plot, and it, uh, uh, Chris Steely put it out on the back of that ton truck with a belly grinder, and I don't know what happened. He bounced off right over there. Huh? He bounced, he bounced off, right, off right, right over there. Stuff. But we should have got this sassafras. Uh, there's no question that. Uh, but with an arsenal granular, again, here's what we're talking about. You're dependent 100% on root uptake, and so you've got to have a higher rate. Uh, you don't have but one mode of action to get that chemical into the plant. And you, if you go across various soil types, then that's exactly what happens. You've got variances in control because uh, you're dependent 100% on the root uptake. No foliar. If we said just seven more. Uh, you haul three different blends. We could basically where it would work on to see the permit field. I sure hope we don't get stuck. Field, we haven't got stuck yet. Field, but it's right over there. Nitrogen. Little nitrogen burn on the front end. If we get out in here, I believe it's going to be a little better. Mitt did not get the crabgrass. There's a, a uh, giant ragweed that it's working on. But the nitrogen did some good on getting this corn going, I believe. There's some more ragweed that it's working on, but it, I don't think it's going to get. It's too big. Here's some ragweed that's pretty well died back, but still probably will come back. But there's a whole row of ragweed there that uh, is bit. But I'll tell you, I think the field is popping up with that nitrogen on it. Still wondering why we got so much nitrogen burn, Jason. Is the hoses flopping more than usual? But I believe that corn is starting to jump out here now. It's going to get ahead of a lot of these weeds. It's still going to be a mess to combine to shell.
but it has set back these uh, ragweed to where the corn's getting ahead of them now. Ragweed was the same size as the corn when we were out here. So. It helped. I don't know whether that, no, the permit wouldn't have done that to the corn. That's got to be the nitrogen. What we see on down here with the zoom. There's that one spot in the field where it was a low spot, a lot of water. Well, actually, I think we'll make a little corn here. Should have killed it, dude. Should have. Yeah, well, we got a good dose of something here, I guess. Probably extra nitrogen. I don't know. Because right over here is green as a gourd. But here we got some dead Johnson grass. Or burnt Johnson grass. Just one. Uh huh. Where's it going? Back to the LZ again? He must have sprayed a load out down there. Pretty good wind there, Donnie.
Good shot. Side trimming. No, I didn't see it. We're right where we're standing? I sure didn't see it. Is that a deer fawn? some good sized stuff he's getting there. Try and spray this. Oh well. Yeah. I'm not too worried about Roundup. I'm not. A, I don't know whether I like arsenal all over me or not. I'm not as scared of the arsenal as I am. <laughs> Is that right? Oh. We'll go wipe her off here in a minute. That sure is good surfactant though, it sticks right to you. <laughs> Spreads right out all over my arm. See that shiny. Mm -hmm. It's getting good coverage. Mm Old Donnie up there with him for a while, didn't he? Clean up some of this, maybe. We may not have to clean this up much. Now this this type of thing, it probably wouldn't worry about. Yeah. You know, just right on the edges and stuff. Yeah.
3426896. What's the address out here, Donnie? Uh, this, or what community we in? Uh, near Homer. Near Homer, Kentucky. This is our first LZ. Eric Hurd, 502-542-6896. Uh, North Logan County, we got a, uh, this was a, uh, our first LZ, we had our helicopter out here. Might be some backwash, but might be a little, uh, definitely some uh, cord drift. Or uh, death by something. Definitely do the helicopter. Probably about a quarter an acre or less. Farmer's not asking for much, but he just mentioned it to us. Wondered if we'd help him out a little bit. My estimate is uh, at a quarter an acre, 100, acre, 100 bushel per acre is uh, 25 bushel times three dollars is uh, about 75 75 dollars six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty six one two three four five six seven eight 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. See, this is Duncan Road. What is that, a B? JB Duncan Road. JB Duncan Road. Okay. And the blacktop, I don't know what the blacktop is. And the blacktop is Highway 1038. Perry Dunning's Tobacco Patch, right up over the ridge. It isn't very big. Thank like goodness. Small tobacco. Yeah, small tobacco. Yeah, we see some plants over here. A little tobacco. And it's funny, we got just some spot plants out here with blue mold on them, Donnie. Okay, got this little patch of tobacco. We got good helicopter work back in here. Tell he's came right up over that ridge, but I swear if I was Mike the helicopter man, I'd come up over that ridge and I'd probably would see this tobacco. Don't you think? If I was standing up here above those lines? Well, yeah, it's so small, probably. Yeah, it's small, but I'd see this tobacco. Now we come out here, and this tobacco down here looks real good, but it's got disease. We're going to look at this disease here. It's got blue mold, I believe. I'm going to take this picture back and show it to Les and some of the other folks. But I believe you can see this these are little blue mold pustules or whatever we call them. And especially they start out on the bottom leaves. And get underneath and everything. And then as we go through this patch, you can see it on the bottom leaves where it's always at. It doesn't have it too bad yet. And I've heard over here in Hopkinsville they don't have it quite as bad as we got it over east of here. But as you get in this ridge out here, He's got some real little tobacco and real sparse. And then the blue mold gets worse over here, a lot worse. And you can see over in here, he's got some absolute dead plants. I hadn't quite seen them like this. But it's definitely got blue mold now. Whether that's chemical, I'm going to have to ask Mike or Lee or somebody but you can tell normally your roundup your cord starts on the outside of the leaves works its way in what I mean it could have a splash and got some on there but I don't think so and then as you come through here he's got it just real sparse right on this head area and it gets good down in here now the question is as you see here, we got, uh, he's probably sprayed this fence row, maybe. We're going to have to ask him. And then he's, uh, 
You can tell the helicopters probably cut off back in here, but we got some dead brush. I don't know whether that's helicopter or whether he sprayed that. Den or, uh, Gary here. Don't know. Looks like the fence row is definitely sprayed sometime or another. Okay. Okay. A little patch of burly tobacco. Not very old. All right. Let's take a peek. Looking at this again, Mike has got close out here because we're seeing wilt over just on the other side of this dead brush. We're seeing some wilt. And this is red bud, you say here? Yeah. And this red bud, especially this over on the other side over here, has got some dye into it and some wilt. So Mike has got up here close, it looks like. I'm going to take a plant or two with me and we'll go back and talk about maybe uh, 50 plants out here that are affected by anything that could be called Roundup or a cord. The rest of it's affected by blue mold. Okay. Question for Mike. Are we getting enough uh, side trim on that? Is that something, and Lee, is that something that's going to die yet? Let me shoot her a little closer here. Donnie would like to go back a little deeper on that. Uh, it may have more stuff on it we think. It may go back pretty deep. We don't know yet. But Donnie's talking about he'd like to go deeper than that. It's a possibility it may come back.
rather than sit and try to calculate out all that out, we just figured that ever who gets the most points is going to win. So, so you're saying that you think the team from Kentucky is going to win? I'm saying the team. They have as much you potential. Have as, as much chance of winning as we do. And we want to hear this exactly. Tell us the exact rules of the point system. You get one point for a bogey. And normally you don't get points for bogeys, but, but since we're going to end up with more bogeys than we do anything else, you get one point for a bogey, two points for a par, three points for a birdie. And if somebody happens to eagle, you get five points for an eagle. Well, I think we would come closer to winning if we didn't have no points for a par. Or for, for a bogey. You think you get as many pars as we're no. going to get? Yeah. I think our chances of getting an eagle are better than anything because we're liable to have one in 100 chances of getting an eagle. <laughs> That's right. And you see, if you no get one eagle, if one of your players gets eagle, then that eagle will equal five bogeys. Well, think about it. What? You ever even seen me hit the ball in the fairways? Yeah, so you hit the ball two or three times, Jeff, in the fairway. See if I can get some good stuff here. What do you say, boys? Give me a drink. No, wait till we get on the course. I will throw us out of here before we get started. Yeah, they'd like to. <laughs> I have a feeling. I guarantee you. Is that that Davis guy? Is that his name? Yeah. I don't know what that's him. What do you say there, Jim Bob? Yay! We oh. ready. Ready. Steve, did you ever get the game worked out or is it just off? I don't know. It looked pretty good in there. You could have saved some of them. What? No, we want the uh, game between you guys. Y'all gonna give us six strokes. Giving y'all shit. What? That's true. Why well, we gotta give strokes? I'm one of the worst players. the worst player of the whole group. I don't know who that would be. So oh, we can name well, John's not that either. bad. Sometimes he does a good job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have named no names, Tom. Just because his name's Davis don't mean he's all bad. All Davises ain't bad. Me and Tom and Les ain't very good. I told it was. Some people ain't good for these people. He said, I'm, I'm big, bro, and I'm not so, so sure. I said, I could tell you what from around here. <laughs> The next message is going to be because everybody else we've dealt with has been pretty friendly. <laughs> but he didn't give me that opportunity. He said, I don't like Clinton anyway. Is that what he said? Yeah, and I said, well, there's 47% of the people in this country that don't.
time is it, Jimmy? Blame it all on you. Oh, here's more shade. Picture taken. What's hiding your oh, now? One just came in with a 69. Don't you do it on number one hole, Denner? Like your picture? Mm hmm. Go! <laughs> Alright, boys, we'll play some serious golf here. I'm going to be so serious today, you just won't believe it. Catch the backswing and see what kind of backswing I got here. All right. Follow through. All right. Can you replay it right quick, John? Yeah. Look at that box, boy. Yeah, look at there, John. What did it look like, Ernie? Get a picture of that right there. I can't find the show of that little squirrel. See that over there, squirrely? I think he's looking right at you. He's looking right at you. He's eating him a walnut or something. What a little place there. Walker, you in trouble? Where did it go? Where did it go? You're Mr. Joe Hill up here now. Where will it go? Mr. Joe the Hill. Mr. Jimmy Walker. Yes, sir. That good looking black hat on. <laughs> that Clint Black hat on. What's that say on the front of that hat? Brown. Brown. Oh, what's-her-name gave you that, probably? Who am I thinking of?